As you read the help for a lot of PowerShell commands, let's look at the help for dir, you'll notice that a lot of them in their their value, so this is expecting a string, they'll have these two little square brackets bumped up against each other. Now that means this parameter is capable of accepting one or more values. So one way in which I could use that is dir dash path c colon. Uh, in fact, because the dash path parameter is positional, I don't actually have to type dash path, just putting the string in the first position will be enough, and well, that's certainly a familiar way to use the dir command, right? But how would I provide multiple values to that? Well, one way would be to provide a comma separated list. So c colon backslash comma c colon backslash windows would work. And so I'll get a directory of both of those. There's windows and there's that. So that's one way of doing it. Now if one of those values has a path, you're going to have to put it in quotation marks like c program files. And so that'll work as well. What you don't want to do is make this mistake and put the entire sequence in quotation marks. Now PowerShell is going to stop recognizing these commas as a way of separating list items. And instead, it's going to treat the commas as a literal part of the path. Well, there is no directory called c colon backslash comma c colon backslash windows comma. It doesn't exist. And so if I try that, PowerShell is going to say, uh, dude, I have no idea what you're talking about. So you just kind of have to remember to be a little careful with your quotes. Another really cool way to use any parameter that supports multiple values is get content. For example, uh, let's see if I have a file called computers.txt. I don't, so let's make one. Uh, we'll put the name localhost in here, and then we'll put server-r2 in here. And I'm going to save that, and then close it. So now let's just type computers.txt. Okay, one computer name per line. Uh, the real command for the type is called get content. So if I do get content, I'll get the exact same results. And it actually has an alias called GC that again gives me the same results. So what I want to do is have PowerShell run this first and feed those results to another command. In fact, let's look at the get service command because it has a computer name property that supports multiple strings. See, there's the little square brackets that tell me this accepts multiple values. One way I could do that is to say get service dash computer name server dash r2 comma local host. But if I've got a list of computers that I'm frequently using, having to type their names in a comma separated list every single time is a little tricky. So here's what I want to do instead. You remember in algebra how parentheses mean you evaluate that portion of the expression first? So we're just going to use a pair of parentheses. And in there, I'm going to put get content computers.txt. So what's going to happen is PowerShell is going to run this first, simply because of the parentheses. That's basically what parentheses tell PowerShell to do, run this first. The results of this, those two strings, are then going to get fed to the computer name. In fact, you can kind of think of it as this entire expression gets replaced with its result. Now the trick is the text file needs to contain one computer name per line, not a comma separated list of computers. And by doing this, I will get back a list of services from both of those. And you can see that my list is actually doubled up because it went out and got them all and they kind of came back at the same time and interleaved with each other. So that's a really cool trick for feeding values to any parameter that says it can accept multiple values.